Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this video I'm going to show you the difference between diploid and haploid cells. And I'm giving you a clue here in the title. Since diploid is written twice and in different colors, it tells you a little bit about what it is. But before we get to diploid and haploid cells, let's talk about the secret of life. And the secret of life is this, that the genes or the information on how to make a new you is going to be found in your DNA. So the DNA contains genes. Those are simply sections of DNA that code for specific RNA which eventually makes specific proteins, and those proteins eventually make you. And so we're going to have around 20,000 genes in human DNA. Each of those are coding for a specific protein. It's a little more complex than that, but that's what you're made up of. You're made up of proteins. And so let's look at a specific chromosome. We're here we're looking at chromosome 16. It's the 16th smallest chromosome that humans have. And if we dye it, if we stain it, it looks kind of like this. It has a short and a long arm, but if we were to look way down here, there's going to be a gene. And that gene, if there is a specific change in it, is going to code for a specific color. And that color is going to be red in red hair. Now there's not just one gene on chromosome 16. There's going to be around a thousand genes just on chromosome 16. And each of those are coding for specific proteins. But this one right here is coding for that red hair color. Now you know, however, that it's not as simple as that. You could have two parents that don't have red hair, and they can have a kid that does have red hair. And so how does that work? Well, you have two chromosomes. You are a diploid organism, and so every cell in your body is not going to have only one chromosome 16, but you're going to have two. Now these chromosomes look the same. When you look at them, they look very similar. And that's because they are homologous chromosomes. They're about the same length. They have centromeres in the same location. They're going to have the same genes all the way up and down. But they're going to just have different alleles or different versions of those genes. Where did you get those two chromosomes from? You got them from your parents. And so you got one from your dad and you got one from your mom. And so you could have a parent who only has one of these genes for red hair it's recessive and it's not going to show up in you. And so every cell in your body is diploid. What does that mean? It has two complete sets of chromosomes and therefore two complete sets of genes. And so what cells in our body are like that? All the cells, all the cells in our body, at least humans, are going to be somatic cells. Somatic cells means body cell. And so every cell is going to be diploid or 2N n is going to refer to the number of chromosomes and so we have one two three chromosomes in a haploid cell and in a diploid cell we're going to have two of each of those chromosomes so we're going to have a total of six and so where are the haploid cells those are going to be the sex cells or the gametes and so this sperm in humans is going to have 23 chromosomes the egg is going to have 23 chromosomes each of those cells by themselves are haploid or n but the somatic cells, or all the cells in our body, the body cells, are going to have 46 chromosomes because we get 23 from our mom and we get 23 from our dad. And so ploidy then refers to the chromosome sets in the nuclei. And so if we were to take a somatic cell or a body cell and take this nucleus here and bust it apart, what would we see? We would see all these different chromosomes. And in this image, they've been dyed, so you can see the different colors. We could arrange them according to length. The longest one's going to be chromosome 1, and it's just going to keep going down like that. And this would be a karyotype. It's going to show that a cell of a human is diploid. It has two copies of every chromosome. Now what does a karyotype tell me? Not much. Um, it does tell me that I'm a girl in this case, that we're going to have two X chromosomes. It could tell me if I had Down syndrome, we'd have an extra chromosome 21. But it doesn't even tell me if I have red hair. It doesn't even tell me what that gene is. It just says that I have two copies of the 16th chromosome. And so in humans, the sex cells or the gametes are going to have half of that. And so an adult somatic cell or body cell, we're going to say 2N equals 46. Well, what does N refer to? It's the number of chromosomes. And again, in humans, we have 23. You can see here's 22, here's 23. But why do we put a 2 in front of the N? Because we have two copies of all of those. And so if we were to look at the gametes, so the sperm and the egg, they're going to be N, or haploid cells, and N is only going to be 23. So 23 chromosomes in the sperm, 23 in the egg, and when we fertilize that egg, we're back to a diploid cell again. And so you should know this, that in humans, we spend most of our life being diploid, or 2N, but it's not the same in all organisms. All organisms are going to move through, eukaryotic organisms are going to move through this diploid phase and then a haploid phase. 
And so you might think, well, how do we move from haploid to diploid? Remember, when two gametes come together, that forms a zygote. And that process is called fertilization. So when sperm fertilize egg, that fertilization process is going to move up into the diploid region. And likewise, when we go from 2N to N, that's meiosis, when we're creating new cells that are haploid or have half the genetic information. And it's also mixed up where there's variable in that. And so let's look at this human right here. So the human, adult human, is going to be diploid in nature. Every cell in its body, except for its sex cells, are going to be diploid, or two copies of all the chromosomes. How do we eventually get back to another human? Well, we're going to have meiosis, where in the male we produce sperm, in female we produce egg, but we're quickly going to have fertilization, and then we're back into the diploid realm. We're going to have a zygote that eventually gets bigger and forms a new organism. And so when you're looking at me, you're looking at cells that are diploid. What's the advantage of that? Well, uh, one thing is we kind of have a backup copy for all our genes. If something goes wrong, we have another one. Um, we also can have variability in that. We can have genes like sickle cell anemia that can hang out and eventually they come in handy later. Um, but it's not the only way life is built. So if we were to look at algae, these algae here, which are microsco microscopic plants, most of them are going to be haploid. And so each of these only has one set of chromosomes or one set of genes in it. What's the advantage of that? It's easier. It doesn't take as long to copy all of that DNA, but they still go through the life cycle. They're still going to have fertilization, quick meiosis back to cells that are haploid again. And so they're going to just be haploid. Or mushrooms, a number of different fungi are going to be haploid. Each cell is only going to have one complete set of genes or one uh, set of chromosomes, but they still will go through fertilization, meiosis back to cells that form a mushroom. If we were to look at some of the higher plants, like this, uh, this evergreen tree here, um, it's going to be diploid. All the cells in it are going to have 2N, or it's going to have two copies of every gene, but it'll still go through meiosis, fertilization, and then we're back to 2N. But very simple things like a moss or a liverwort are going to spend a lot of their time down here in the haploid. And so again, there's variety in life, and it's played against um, you know, the advantages in their specific environment. And there are going to be some things where we get, you know, triploid or tetraploid or polyploid. In fact, plants are made by having mistakes where we increase the number of chromosomes and it can create a new plant. I think there's a t uh, type of plant called the death adder that has 1024 ploid. And so it has so many chromosomes, it has so many genes, but it still works. I'll leave you with a really tough question. The tough question is this. Bacteria... Um, What's their ploidy? In other words, are they haploid? Are they diploid? Now, they're not going to go through meiosis, remember. They're going to go through binary fission. But what are they? Uh, well, the right answer is that they're somewhere between haploid and diploid. And so what's their ploidy? It would be like 1.2 or 1.8. Well, how does that work? If you have a bacteria, the DNA gets copied really, really quickly. And so they're quickly going to copy their DNA, but it takes much longer to make the proteins that eventually build to bacteria. And so if we were to look at all these bacteria, some of them are going to have, you know, one, but some of them are going to have 1.2, 1 1.8. 1 They're going to be somewhere between the two. And so what is ploidy? It's going to tell us the number of chromosome sets that we have. Again, it's different in all forms of nature, and I hope that was helpful.